the New Jersey Devils against our beloved New York Rangers. So the Rangers obviously famously had a trade deadline for the ages, both in terms of acquiring players and the cap gymnastics and everything that went into that, which was made my brain hurt, but they acquired Vladimir Tarasenko, Patrick Kane, Nico Mikola, and they brought back Tyler Mott, which yes, I just, I love that move so much, but we're going against the Devils, who brought in Timo Meyer, a team that, frankly speaking, beat us three times to one, well, factually speaking, beat us three time, three games to one in the regular season. A team, frankly speaking, that can and has outskated us in those four games. But, I mean, I think this is going to come down to goaltending. And... I will skip ahead to my prediction really quick. I think it's going to be Rangers in seven. Um, yeah, I'll start off with my prediction real quick. I think it's going to be Rangers in seven as well. I mean, we'll just continue the trend, shall we? Yes. Um, with me and you picking uh, similar results to the series. Um, again, I think that there's no doubt uh, that the Devils have outskated us this season in the season series. Um, but again, I said the same thing about the Rangers and the Hurricanes once we reached the bubble. And once that happened, what happened? The playoff experience for the Hurricanes uh, outdid the Rangers and they handled us with ease. And I could see the Rangers um, doing the same thing to the Devils, who, again, haven't been in the postseason with this core as of yet. Your Jack Hughes, your Nico Heischer, et cetera. So I think it's going to be an adjustment period. I think that the, De the Rangers are going to win the series and I think it's going to lead them on an extended playoff run. But the Rangers cannot, and I repeat, cannot take the Devils lightly because they will lose this series if they do but i think just the edge in goaltending and the edge up front and i just think if the rangers can combat the devil's speed and contain jack hughes as much as possible they'll be okay yes but jack hughes and nico heischer and the aforementioned timo meyer are not the only players that the rangers have to contain because i mean dude look at the devil's roster jesper bratt having a good year eric Halla, He's a decent depth piece. Sharon Govich having a good year, and he's still only 24, which I could have sworn he was like 27 or 28. That That's just me. Dawson Mercer is having a fantastic season for a 21-year-old. And their back end is, outside of Dougie Hamilton, John Marino's good. Severson, from what I heard, had a good season. Ryan Graves has been pretty good for them. And, of course, you know, Rangers legend Brendan Smith, another another Rangers legend. We'll see they, if Brendan Smith gets in. <laughs> yeah, and they just signed Luke Hughes, which that's that's scaring me a little bit because how many times have we seen a young guy like that, a high draft pick like that, come in and provide a spark that was needed to push a team around or two? That worries me. That worries me a yes. little bit. And the last time I saw it going into the playoffs, you know who it was? It was Kale McCarr. And yes. Kale McCarr came straight out of college, and he dominated for the Avalanche in the playoffs. So just something to throw out there. Yeah. Now, granted, Blackwood's having a good season. Banachek is a also a pretty good goalie. And honestly, that's a pretty good goaltending tandem for New Jersey, if I'm being honest with you. But well, one thing that's interesting with the Devils goaltending is that Vitek Manichek was injured late in the year, and they kind of gave Mackenzie Blackwood a trial run to be the backup for Banachek in the playoffs, and he completely shit the bed against the Capitals and had to get pulled, and they called up Akira Schmid, and now it's going to be Schmid and Vanacek in the playoffs. And vanacek has been injured at the end of the year, and he hasn't really been great. I think he had a 9-11 save percentage. So we could see potentially Akira Schmidt in this series. So, again, just a lot of lot of interesting avenues that this series could go in. And I think the Devils goaltending is um, a very interesting storyline. That's why, at the end of the day, Shades, I'm taking the Rangers to win because Igor just makes that much of a difference. I think Vanacek is good, but has Vanacek ever been a number one? And he really hasn't, at least not in a postseason race. So... Yeah, now remember when the Capitals won the Cup in 2018, how Holpe played miserable that entire regular season? Yeah. And then basically be went God mode for two months. They won the Cup, and then he went back to being terrible again. 
uh, you, that just goes to show you, you never know what you're going to get from your goalies in the playoffs. How many times have we seen this? I mean, look last year with Jake Ottinger. Dallas didn't win, but he was the only reason that Dallas even had a chance. Yep, agreed, 100%. But with all this being said, I still think the Rangers edge the Devils out because look at this team on paper. You have a top six consisting of Mika Zibanejad, Patrick Kane, Vladimir Tarasenko, Artemi Panarin, Vincent Trocek, and Chris Kreider, who is arguably your seventh best forward. Arguably. And you have, obviously, the kid line. You have a back end of Adam Fox, Jacob Truba, Keandre Miller, and the glue that holds this defensive core together, Ryan Lindgren, along with a young and up-and-coming Braden Schneider. And you have, arguably, the best goalie in the world. How can you bet against that? Yeah, you know, I go position by position, you know, just like you did. I look at it. I see a top 10 center in the league. I see a top 5 D-man in the league. I see two top 10 wingers in the league. And I see a top 5 goalie in the league. And I see a top 5 head coach, quite frankly. So you combine all that together, and I know you disagree, but, you know, whatever. I think Gerard Glenn, his track record speaks for itself. Um, and he has really led this Rangers team to a couple of good seasons in a row here. But, again, results speak for themselves, and we'll see what they do against the Devils. But, again, they are just stacked at every single position. But this is the year. If you can't win it with Patrick Kane and Vladimir Tarasenko, with the group that got you to Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Finals last year, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow especially if we go out in the first round. So that's why I can't sit here and, and give the devils any, uh, any credit or any chance. <laughs> yeah. And notice how I didn't even mention the fourth line consisting of Tyler Mott and Jimmy VC, who was having frankly a very <laughs> underrated season. I mean, there is not really a hole on this team. The only hole you could possibly argue is third spot excuse me, third pair left defenseman. That's the only place on this roster where you can arguably argue there's a hole. Yep, and that's Mikola, right? Yep. And Mikola has been very, very good since coming over from the Blues. Yeah, he's had his uh, he's had his rough games, but... He has, but I think for the most part, I think he's slotted in nicely. He's a good skater, and I think he's helped Kako a lot too. I don't think it's a coincidence that Kako's season kind of took off right when Mikko got here. He's been really good to end the season. I think Mikko is getting in his head, maybe telling him to shoot a little more, which he has. It's that Finnish connection that maybe he needed, so it's good too. Now, while the Devils do have the advantage on the penalty kill, fourth and the Rangers are 13th, the Rangers' power play, which I was kind of shocked, they finished seventh. And the Devils finished 13th. The reason I say I was shocked, because I remember that stretch where they couldn't score a power play goal to save their lives. And they yeah. honestly didn't really fall too far. Well, that's I why, think, yeah. Yeah, okay. that, that's why I was shocked there. And face-off percentage, we still we cannot crack 50% these last couple of years to save our lives. Well, I think an interesting aspect of at least the special teams is that the Rangers have had a ton of success against the Devils on the power play this season. I think percentages north of 35% uh, in the uh, small several number of games that they played head-to-head -head against one another. So that's an interesting little tidbit. Yeah, and lastly, the goals for per game, the Devils had the lead by 0.19 goals per game, finishing fourth compared to the Rangers' 12th. And the goals against is very close. The Devils finished with 2.71, finishing eighth, and the Rangers finished in fourth with 2.63. So I don't think this is going to be a cakewalk of a series at all for the Rangers. In fact, this is my series of the first round, just like Minnesota and I think it was St. Louis or Colorado last year was my series of the first round, which it ended up being. So I'm hoping I'm right in that aspect. But I think this is going to be a little bit of a dogfight, and I cannot wait to see it going to be absolutely a dogfight and it's going to be a tight even series it's going to be a frustrating series probably for both fan bases but again i think the rangers are going to win i think the rangers are going to win in seven games i wouldn't be surprised if they won in six games mm. um but uh i don't want to 
uh, put the cart before the horse here. Let's let's say that the range is going to win in seven. Yeah, I'm good with that. I am good with that. 